and here to give us the inside scoop uh, on all things Ron Paul and how America can get behind this true constitutionalist is the editor-in-chief of LouRockwell.com, none other than Lou Rockwell, who also, of course, served as Ron Paul's chief of staff. So it doesn't get any better than Ron Paul, but uh, if there has to be a, a second brightest spot in the universe, it's Lou Rockwell. Lou, thank you for joining us tonight. Alex, great to be with you. So much is happening uh, out of the gates. Uh, can Ron Paul win? Yeah, Ron Paul can win. And in fact, the fear that the media is exhibiting by first trying to um, put the blackout on him, and then of course demonizing him when they're not blacking him out, shows that they are very afraid. He's talking about issues that are resonating with the American people as never before, issues that threaten the establishment, everything from the Pentagon to the CIA to the Federal Reserve to the bankocracy and all the rest of the power elite in Washington. Uh, they're being threatened. They're worried and they wouldn't be paying, you know, they wouldn't be saying anything about Ron Paul, Rush Limbaugh, Hannity, Bill O'Reilly, all the rest of these people would not be denouncing him if he didn't threaten the uh, apparatus that they're part of. So he can win. And as you say, he's moving up in the polls. He's moving up slowly, but he's moving up organically. He's getting more and more people, young people especially, but people of all ages in all different states, not only in this country, I might add, but around the world. People are, are uh, Ron Paulians in every country. So this is an international movement. Uh, it bodes so well for the American future as we face, of course, terrible economic and other kinds of troubles. But this is, this is the bright spot in America today is the Ron Paul movement. And of course, I was being somewhat sarcastic and devil's advocate when I said, can he win? I mean, in every poll, he's in the top three candidates. New Gallup poll uh, out today uh, shows him in third place. Some have shown him in second place, others in first place. And it's this mantra of telling the public he can't win. I, I'm sure you saw that pure research uh, piece that Pew put out last week showing that indeed, uh, Ron Paul has gotten less coverage than any other candidate, and most of the coverage has been negative. Well, that right there is an endorsement. If Limbaugh is saying he'll destroy the Republican Party, I saw what you wrote, well, uh, you know, good if it destroys the official, you know, Republican Party. Yeah, that'd and, be and, good news. Yeah, 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 so that's the proof right there that the whole establishment is coming after him. I mean, that's the proof right there that he's the man for the job, not just his long record of being a constitutionalist. Well, as we know, uh, George H.W. Bush refers to Rush Limbaugh as our boy. And indeed he is, you know, that's, he is part of that, the Bush uh, establishment, country club, Republican apparatus. Uh, but the more that people get to know Ron, uh, I believe, by the way, the media stuff is backfiring on them because people who are paying attention realize just how unfair this is. And they want to know, well, why is he being targeted? So once they look at Ron, once they see his YouTubes, of course, if they saw him in person, when they read his articles, read his books, this is, this is the most learned guy running for president in a very, very long time. Maybe we have to go back to Jefferson. I mean, he's so well read. He understands economics. He understands history. He understands everything about what's going on in this country. He's so much smarter the Rick Perry, Bachman, uh, Romney, the rest of these guys. He just is intellectually head and shoulders above them, of course, in character, too. And as people get to know him, they flock to him. So it's, it's quite an extraordinary moment in American history. And uh, I think it's why we have to be fundamentally optimistic, because so many young people uh, have just had it with the system. They know there's a problem. Uh, I just saw a wonderful YouTube put together by some kids uh, last night where it's uh, people all over the country saying, you know, we know there's a problem. We don't believe what the government is saying. We don't believe what the media is saying. Only Ron Paul is telling us the truth. And so, you know, we need to change. We need some hope, not, not like Obama. Not, we don't need any more bankocracy, the two-party bankocracy of the Democrats and the Republicans. We need something different. So Ron Paul is, again, he's, he's, uh, he's scaring the pants off the establishment, and that's very good news. Well, I agree with you. And just about a week ago, The Daily Show came out and really pointed out that there was a uh, open uh, campaign to ignore Ron Paul or they were forced to cover him, say, well, he can't win. And since the dam is broken uh, on the attempt to cover up Ron Paul and since it backfired, I now see them shifting gears. And uh, I fear that we're going to see Aqua Buddha attempts we're going to hear that Ron Paul uh, assassinated Lincoln. 
Uh, we're going to hear that he blew up the uh, Lusitania, that he started, well, well, that he crucified Christ. Uh, but, but I saw that, again, backfire when they tried it on Rand. What's your political instinct, uh, Lou, uh, on the next way they're going to try to go after Ron Paul, and well, will, it, will it be effective? Uh, I don't think it'll be effective. Of course, it's the old, the old Gandhi line about, uh, you know, first they ignore you, then they attack you, then you win. So it's, it's a, uh, this is just going along with what they usually do. But as we know from polls, as we know from everybody that we talk to ourselves, and you're especially in touch with so many people, nobody trusts the mainstream media. Nobody believes them. Um, the new media, like the Alex Jones show, people have trust in, but nobody trusts NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, and the rest of these. At least not most Americans don't. So when they see these people going after somebody, it makes them ask, what's right about him? So again, all you have to do is direct people to Ron, to his YouTubes, his writings, his, uh, his website, and uh, the website's about him, and uh, people love him, and they, and they have hope, and they no longer feel, uh, they, n not that Ron is giving us any soft soap. We know we've got serious economic troubles, very serious economic troubles, and other sorts of troubles ahead, but as Ron explains to us, we can have a way out of it. There is a way out of it. We don't have to have this forever. There is a path to um, economic growth, to prosperity, to human flourishing against all the people who, of course, are against human flourishing, the warmongers, the money counterfeiters, the bankers, and all the, all the rest of the power elite. So uh, they're going to, they're going, of course, going to smear him. They're going to libel him. They're going to toss mud at him. But you know, they talked about Reagan being the Teflon uh, candidate. Actually, Ron Paul's the Teflon candidate, not because um, the stuff just doesn't stick to him. And it's because when people look at him, I, I remember in a previous congressional election where his opponent said he's against the drug war, he wants heroin dispensaries at the public schools, at the elementary schools, so the kids can take heroin. Well, of course, no, nobody, nobody believes that stuff. They look at Ron Paul, they listen to him, they get a sense of the kind of man he is. Now, you don't get that from any kind of politician, uh, a regular politician. Maybe you just think he's a slippery guy. People listen to Ron Paul and they think, well, you know, this is a wise man. This is a man who knows. This is a man who's brilliant and who's actually got hope for the future. Um, so I think, I don't, I think the, the campaign is not going to work. Again, it's going to backfire, just like the blackout backfired. More and more Americans, um, you know, the more they examine Bachman or Perry or Romney or Chris Christie or Palin or any of those other people they're talking about, let alone Jeb Bush, I mean, the other people they're talking about maybe getting in the race, they're all pygmies. They're moral pygmies. They're intellectual pygmies against a very great man, Ron Paul. So, well, they're uh, undoubtedly political hacks. I mean, they're just complete political fake creatures who constantly flip-flop. And I don't want to dwell too long on this, but Rick Perry, who pledged not to run, of course, broke the pledge. It was all about peaking interest in the uh, reluctant hero. He's a guy for forced inoculations, NAFTA superhighways, Al Gore's former chief of staff uh, in Texas. And this now, the media is saying, is the front runner. And I just say, shame on America if you go for another Obama type, another Rick Perry, another package plastic Ken doll, if they don't choose Ron Paul. But briefly, uh, your take on Rick Perry and, and then the fact that Ron Paul is really the man of the hour. He predicted with precision, along with you and others, exactly what would happen with the inflation tax and so much more. And uh, your view on the uh, upcoming death of the dollar. Well, I think, first of all, as to Rick Perry, there are many things to say about him. To me, the key thing that stands out in my mind is the fact that in Texas, he's known as Gardasil Rick. And that's <laughs> because he took money from the Merck drug company, as did the Republican Party of Texas and all the Republican politicians down there, to force a very dangerous and untested HPV vaccine on every sixth grade girl in public school in Texas. The fact that this man, you know, talks about the Obama mandate, the fact that this guy would have used government force and of course, a, a huge ripoff for Merck. I mean, hundreds of dollars per shot. Uh, and these girls had to have multiple shots, causing uh, so many illnesses. Happened in England, too. But the fact that this guy would have used the power of the governorship in return for bribes, maybe they're legal bribes, or they're still bribes, uh, to uh, force this dangerous vaccine on little girls. What a criminal. What a monster. I mean, Rick, Rick Perry. I mean, all these politicians, of course, are criminals and monsters. Uh, the regular politicians, 
But Perry really stands out as, it seems to me, a first-class creep, a totalitarian, as you say, the Trans-Texas Highway, I mean, all the various things he's done. This guy is just, uh, so I, I, I don't, I'm not worried at all about Perry, because as the word gets out about who he really is, uh, he's going to go nowhere. I don't think Americans are ready for another George W. Bush, and uh, he's just, he's another clown like Bush. But he's trying to become Ron Paul, saying that the Federal Reserve is almost treasonous. Well, no, it's a private offshore corporation. It's looking out for itself. How is, how is that treasonous? Isn't it really treasonous that Congress and others have let them do this to our country? And he's trying to become Ron Paul. And I think it shows how powerful the message of liberty is that you and others and Ron Paul have been real standard bearers for, that now Rick Perry is openly trying to shape shift into Ron Paul. And if we simply get out the truth about his record and say, no, Ron Paul is the real Ron Paul. He's the real McCoy, not Rick Perry. I mean, that is... Job number one, I think, is to expose the Rick Perry hoax. Well, I think that's right. But, you know, it, as you say, it is a tribute to Ron that he feels, correctly so, that by denouncing the Federal Reserve and denouncing Ben Bernanke, it's good politics. So this is because, Ron, you know, uh, when I, I've been interested in the Fed for a very long time, and I can tell you people's eyes would glaze over when you tried to discuss it. Ron Paul made the Fed interesting. He made Americans aware that we're being ripped off by the Federal Reserve and its associated banks. And so that the establishment said, well, Rick Perry really damaged himself when he said that about Bernanke and the Fed. Actually, he didn't, of course. He helped himself. Uh, but he is a fake. He's a phony. He's trying to steal Ron Paul's thunder. But I think it's, it's not going to work. Ron Paul is the real deal. And as I can testify myself from having worked for him and having known him for so many years, what you see on the television screen is actually the real guy. I mean, he actually, unlike... Uh, other people I've known in politics who are not the same as on the TV screen. Ron Paul's the real deal. And he actually has studied the Federal Reserve. He's read vastly and he knows everything about the history of the Fed, everything they're doing to the, to the, uh, to the dollar. And uh, they are bringing about, of course, as you pointed out, the death of the dollar. Um, we face, uh, it's a horror, we, we don't know the timing. Uh, and the dollar is going to be strengthened probably by all the continuing troubles that the banks are giving the uh, European countries and destroying the, uh, uh, the euro. But we're going to see much higher inflation here. Uh, it's going to be horrific, probably going to be worse than the 1970s. But again, we don't have to have that permanently. We don't have to have a, a uh, counterfeiting board in Washington, D.C., ripping off regular people for the benefit of Wall Street and the big banks and the government itself. So we don't have to have all these wars what are they fighting? Six or seven wars and, of course, secret wars and uh, just uh, wading uh, knee deep in blood all over the world. Uh, other countries resent it. Americans ought to resent it. Uh, Ron Paul is talking about really the most important issue, even more important than the money issue, and it's hard to think of anything that is, except the one issue of war and peace. So uh, no more wars. Bring the troops home. Stop the counterfeiting. Cut government spending. It can be done, and I know that people have questioned, well, if Ron Paul were elected, the Congress would never go along with him. But all I can say is if Ron Paul were is to be elected, and the kind of mandate he would have, all those congressmen who care about being elected more than anything else and being reelected would be asking, Dr. Paul, what do we do? Absolutely. I mean, the, whole, the whole country would be in the mood for big changes, a, uh, I hate to use Roosevelt's phrase, but an actual new deal, a new deal for the American people, a new deal of freedom, a new deal of prosperity, a Ron Paul new deal. Absolutely. And uh, just 15, 20 years ago, he couldn't get one co-sponsor to audit the Fed. It passed the House, as you know, last year. And with Ron Paul as president, they would have a lot of trouble. Um, no army can stop an idea whose time has come, as the French philosopher Victor Hugo said. And after decades of laboring out there in the wilderness, Lou, uh, you and others that uh, deserve so much credit, uh, our time is coming. The, liberty is approaching. And even if Ron Paul doesn't win this round, he certainly wins by injecting real issues. And uh, freedom is popular. And we need That's to right. legalize, legalize freedom uh, as Ron Paul and as you have said. Lou Rockwell of lourockwell.com. I'll continue to track all the amazing research and reports you put out and also the work you do over at the Von Mies Institute that you founded and head up. Lou Rockwell, thank you so much for joining us. Alex, thank you so much.